All right, so now we come to everyone's favorite middle school stumbling block, arithmetic with fractions. Um, so we're going to start with addition, which tends to be the trickier part. Uh, or, you know, subtract. So subtraction is the same thing, right? Subtraction is just addition where uh, the numbers have opposite signs, right? One of the numbers happens to be negative. Um, so if you understand addition, you understand a subtraction. Uh, a lot of people, when they're, when they're telling you about fraction addition, they're going to give you some formula, right? They're going to say something like, well, here, I'm going to be one of those people that gives it to you. Uh, maybe I won't. A over B plus C over D. And then they're going to say, oh, yeah, so there's this thing, right? Uh, oh, here, why not? I'll give it to you. They'll say, oh, it's A times D plus B times C over B times. No, nobody, nobody sits down and memorizes this formula and applies it every time they want to add a couple of fractions, right? Um, the key to adding fractions is this bit right here, right? It's the so-called common denominator. All right, so how does this work? So the idea is that when you're adding things, you can really only add things that are of the same type. Um, think of the de denominator in a fraction as, as being something like a, like a unit, right? Um, so really when you, <coughs> when you write down a fraction, like say, say 3 fifths, right? Well, some of this comes back to just how do you interpret fractions? How do you visualize fractions? Um, maybe you have this kind of like pie picture, right? Um, Probably one of the better ways to, to think about it is start with the, you know, start with the unit interval, right? All the real numbers going from 0 to 1, okay? And, of course, if you, if you want to do improper fractions or negative fractions, you're going to have to modify this slightly. But for, for fractions between 0 and 1, right, the denominator tells you how many pieces you should cut your interval into. Um, those are supposed to be five equal pieces. Not my best effort. Uh, the numerator tells you how many of those pieces you should keep. Right? So we should keep three of them. Right? So we, we can kind of have this sort of picture of our fraction where we, we shade three out of five boxes. Okay? So you, it always makes sense to add things that are the same, right? You can add like things. So if somebody says, I want you to do, you know, two-fifths plus, plus one-fifth, you say, okay, I'm adding two fractions of the same type. They're both fifths, right? So if I had two of these, right, and then I added one more, I'd have three of them. That's fine, right? Um, where things get more complicated is when somebody says, okay, I've got two-fifths, and I want you to add, you know, uh, let's say three-tenths, okay? Now these are fractions that are, are, are different types, right? So, so this is now, you know, rather than saying, okay, I want you to, like, take two apples and add one more apple, um, sort of like, well, it's not quite apples and oranges. Maybe something like, okay, somebody says, I want you to take, I want you to take two feet and add on three inches. Right? The answer is not going to be five feet. It's not going to be five inches. Right? It's, it's somewhere in between because you need to do a conversion. You need to do a unit conversion. And so the key is that, you know, if I, if I have something that's divided into five pieces, well, there's an easy way to get ten pieces. I take each of the five pieces that I have and I divide it in half. Now I have 10 pieces, right? And so then my, my three-fifths that I had before becomes one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, or in this case, two-fifths would become one, two, three, four of the 10 pieces, right? So two-fifths, this is the same as four-tenths, right? And, and the way you do the conversion, this notion of equivalent fractions, is that you can always multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing without changing it. So we go 2 over 2, right? So we have 2 times 2, 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 gives me the 4, 2 times 5 gives me the 10. 
we add the three tenths, and now that we have two fractions of the same type, right, we can add them. Okay. The most complicated scenario when you're adding numbers, right, is when you've got two different denominators and neither one is a multiple of the other. So you're adding something like one third and you're going to add, I don't know, uh, let's do one third plus one quarter, okay? Um, so if you want to, you can think about this visually, right? You can think about that you've got one piece and you've divided it into three pieces. You've got another one that you've divided into four pieces. And you're, you're taking one of them and one of them. And you're just kind of going to stick them together, right? You take that piece and that piece. And you're going to stick them together. Now you're wondering, like, how long is that piece, right? As a as a fraction of the whole, how much do I actually have? <clears throat> well, you do the same equivalent fractions idea, but now you're going to have to adjust both denominators until you get one that matches, right? And that's where this, this rule comes in, right? That one way that you can always get a common denominator is just to multiply the two denominators that you have, right? 3 times 4 gives me 12, right? So I can write both of these as fractions over, over 12. I just have to think about what do I need to multiply each one by top and bottom to get to the 12. Well, 12 is 3 times 4, so here I need 3 times 4. But anything you do to the bottom, you should also do to the top, right? Here I need 4 times 3, okay? And again, do the same thing top and bottom. So what I get is now 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, leaving me with 7 twelfths, okay? And then you got it done. Uh, again, if you wanted to kind of, you know, use this sort of picture to visualize, what you're doing is each of these three pieces, you're dividing into four. Each of these four pieces, you're dividing into three. And now, each of these bars has been divided into 12 equal pieces, right? And there are one, two, three, four pieces here, one, two, three pieces here, and so you'd have seven pieces there out of the 12 in total, right? Um, that's the idea with addition. Again, subtraction, if I did, if I was doing, let's say, one third minus a quarter, well, this would be four twelfths minus three twelfths, I get one twelfth, right? Subtraction is not any harder. Um, we're going to pause there, we're going to come back, we're going to do one example with some, some variables in it, um, and then we'll talk multiplication.